welcome all of you to my module batch process engineering my name is vasant i work as a lecturer in the department of chemical science in university of limerick so what i intend to do in this lecture is i'm going to introduce so what are the topics that we are going to cover in this module batch process engineering and then why why are we studying this module you should know so what wh why are we studying some of the topics that we are going to cover in this lecture so and then we are going to see how i'm going to i'm going to tell how i'm going to assess your performance in this module and i will also brief some of the topics that will be covered in the first six weeks and i will also tell why why those topics in the first six weeks and i'm going to talk a bit about the tutorials and how I'm going to deliver these tutorials and I'm going to talk a bit about labs how I'm going to deliver the labs or how you are going to write the laboratory report or the deadlines and so on so what are the topics that will be covered in this module so <coughs> you will learn a bit about a batch reactor design so if you if i give you some recipe like something you mix and then you get some products and you perform that in a batch reactor and if i give give the stoichiometric relation and the kinetic constants you will learn using those parameters that you get from a normal laboratory experiment and then using those small values that you get from those lab scale experiments you will manage to design a large scale batch reactor so those things you will learn in this module and then we will learn a bit about the fundamentals of uh, reaction kinetics so if you're going to design a reactor obviously you should know something <coughs> about what type of reaction is happening inside the reactor and then as part of this you are going to learn some rules or we will define some some rules like uh, we will not worry about what type of uh, reaction is happening okay sorry i mean we will worry about what type of reaction is happening but we will we will not we will not think a lot about the actual mechanism itself like uh, okay some product or some reactant is getting converted into products and it's going to follow some set of rules so we are going to define that rule or some derive some new rules or if it or some of the existing rules that is already reported in the literature so we are going to cover those those type of things under this topic reaction kinetics and then we i will talk about a bit about first order kinetics second order kinetics probably you might have learned this in general chemistry or in any other modules before coming to this this particular module and then you will learn a bit about um, irreversible reaction and reversible reactions so this if you look at this first topic batch reactor design so we will We've, we will design a batch reactor with uh, with few things keeping in our mind so we will assume there is some reaction and it will follow some first order or second order it can be a reversible reaction it can be an irreversible reaction so we have to change our strategies to design a batch reactor depending on the type of reaction kinetics which is happening inside the reactor so you will learn all those topics uh, in this module and then reactions like uh, it can be an equilibrium reaction go down to the next it can be an equilibrium reaction it can be a, a conversion reaction and you might perform perform the reaction at constant temperature we call it as isothermal conditions or sometime your temperature will change during the course of your experiment or during the course of your reaction and sometimes we may not want to control the temperature at constant at a, at a fixed point so so we call them as non isothermal conditions so so we will design a batch reactor considering different aspects for first order reaction second order reaction if it is an if the reaction is at isothermal conditions how we are going to design a batch reactor if it's at non isothermal conditions how we are going to design a batch reactor so so these are the topics that we are going to to cover in this module and then <coughs> so how we will deal deal with this type of problems like what we will do is like we will take some experimental data from textbooks or from scientific literature and then we will design a simple batch reactor we will try to optimize the process conditions etc and get some uh, uh, reaction conditions for example like temperature and and then 
like like agitation speed and and so on and then we will play with these things and then we will try to to optimize optimize the the process condition and then eventually we will design a batch reactor yeah so so and, and we will also learn use this knowledge like a uh, like first order second order and irreversible reaction and how the kinetics looks like we will use those knowledge to get some information about the process like a uh, like how the conversion changes with respect to time or how to set up a reactor or like like starting from the scratch like how to set up a reactor and you perform some particular type of reaction which is of our interest and then optimize the conditions and how do we operate the reactor so that allows you to increase um, like um, the product yield that's the main objective of performing any reaction so so we do some reaction just to, to get some new product so we will optimize the condition so that we will get we will maximize the yield of the product so you will learn you won't do this experiment but we will take the data we will solve the problem so so that at the end of the the the, the how do you call it? this once we finish this particular topic then you will know you will know how to design a reactor and then how to deal with the different type of reactions in that batch reactor yeah and so obviously this is an engineering subject batch process engineering the third line is engineering third word so so you are going to have a bit of derivations you will have a bit of some theories and you will have some empirical correlations we will do a lot of data analysis like uh, this one comes when you are going to solve some problem especially during the tutorial time so if i give you a problem you need to uh, with some some data that we normally get from experiments so we need to perform a bit of a data analysis and and we will do that based on the knowledge that we gained from the different rules that we are going to learn during the lecture times and also we will solve a lot of problems and so i, I know this class we have a, a mix of uh, people with engineering background and who may not have an engineering background so so i will try to adjust the module so that everybody can 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 learn this module in the same way yeah? so so it's but 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 how you are going to perform that depends on how much effort you put to learn this topic so i recommend you to watch the videos once i upload and then try to try to understand especially if there is a derivation or problem you shouldn't hesitate to use a pen and paper you should try to solve the problem and that's the only way you can learn this subject yeah and then you will have a bit of mathematics in this in this module it's not tough ones mostly you will use like a ordinary differential equation some basic integration integral calculus sorry and then we will develop some design correlations kinetic expressions defined rate loss rate loss are something like um, like when you perform a reaction you are going to form some new products so we will define a law how your product will change with respect to time like after one hour i get two kgs after 10 hour how many kgs i'm going to get so to know that you need to define some law that can relate your product concentration with respect to time or your your reactants concentration with respect to time so those things we will cover yeah probably you might have learned some of these things in other modules but we will bring that engineering aspect uh, to those uh, to those kinetic laws that you might have learned in few other other modules before coming to before taking <coughs> this particular module yeah and then what else we can see we will learn we will perform a bit of mass balance calculations so i will write it probably if mass balance calculations and then we will do some energy balance calculations energy balance calculations probably in the next lecture I, I will try to write everything what I want to say and then go on to the lecture so I think that will save lots of time so every time when I write while I talk it's consuming extra time and then so sometimes the topics that I can cover in 40 minutes uh, I think it's going up to more than one hour in the video so so next lecture probably I will try to, to write everything before in the paper and then I will go on start to and then I will go on with my my lectures yeah so so as I said we will cover do some mass balance calculations we will perform some energy balance calculations and then if you look into this this module like whatever I said so far so 
these topics already cover already cover or cuts across so many disciplines in chemical engineering so one is mass balance another is energy balance and you will do some heat transfer calculations so you will do some heat transfer calculations and it, you will learn something about reaction engineering and then reaction kinetics and equipment design which can be which can be a normal reactor design yeah? and then <clears throat> so for the students who do not have an engineering background so you don't have to worry that this module might look like a too much mathematics it's not that complex like uh, if you take mass balance mass balance it's not a complex topic yeah? so so it, it depends, it, it relies on only one law which you might have learned already in the school time from, from your physics class, physics teachers. It's a law of conservation of mass. So this law states that you cannot destroy the mass or you cannot create the mass. So what it says is like, if you have a system, if you have some mass, that mass will be conserved. So as, as chemical engineers, what we are going to do is like uh, we're going to express that that law of physics uh, in a mathematical way so we will give some expression and then so that like it will look like a mathematical expression so it in fact it's not a big like too many complex things it's it's like a one line equation if you to put it simply it will look like something like that so mass in that will be equal to mass out so you will deal with this type of uh, simple expressions when when we are going to perform some mass balance calculations and this rule like mass in is equal to mass out so no matter what type of reaction you are dealing with or whatever is happening inside the chemical reactor we, we will stick to this one basic law and we will perform a lot of mass balance calculations so so for the students who do not have engineering background so you shouldn't worry yeah? this module is really easy but you should learn you should you should you should read you shouldn't be afraid of doing mathematics you shouldn't be afraid of uh, the derivations that we are going to do in the in the classrooms and we will use uh, a lot of graphical techniques so so that's the so so most of the chemical engineers we 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 rely on uh, different type of techniques you know we don't follow one rule because there is no universal rule like I, i'm going to follow this set of rules to design a reactor or some other unit operations there is nothing like that so we will follow different type of rules and we will cover some of those topics in this lecture so so, so you shouldn't be afraid so whenever we, like like the next lecture i'm going to cover liquid liquid extraction for example for that i will i will throw you a lot of theory yeah you will learn about uh, ternary diagram you will learn about liquid liquid equilibrium those words might look new to you and you might have three dimensions in the graph as of human mind we we are always used to to, to two dimensions we don't even like a one dimension like a walk straight nobody likes that yeah so we are so much used to two dimensions but in this model you are going to deal with uh, some graphs where you will have more than two dimensions so so i recommend you so once i upload some videos so you must try to watch it immediately yeah so so that's the only way this you can you can found you can find this model as as a as a easy topic yeah like so the, the topics are not really tough but you must learn yeah you must read the only way to survive this module is to is to read read every day yeah so so whatever i'm going to give you you must read practice try to use a lot of pen and paper especially when we are going to deal with uh, ternary diagrams and and so on and then energy balance so so i gave this module for the first time in the last year so and and the students who do not have engineering background they they just got afraid when i said like you have a lot of mathematics and derivations you shouldn't be like uh, like mass balance as i said you have only one equations and and then this energy balance and heat transfer for this we are going to use only two laws it's so not more than that so like like a heat transfer for example so you will have only two laws yeah so it's called fourier's law so and and then newton's law of cooling so 
so you, you have only only two different laws so if you know what is these two last states then you will solve almost every heat transfer problem in chemical engineering and also for this module you will find this very 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 easy whenever i'm going to ask you like uh, you have a reactor some some temperature is going into the reactor some temperature is coming out from the reactor give some number that quantify these quantities yes so so we will i will explain you what are these two laws at some stage during the the lecture time so you will learn them you, know? you will learn and then and and if you want to mention heat transfer itself is a chemical engineering subject so so this one module is 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 really good you know like from just from one module you you learn almost all the fundamentals or the basic principles involved in chemical engineering so that in fact i consider that as beauty of this particular module you know? and then reaction engineering coming back to reaction engineering which i mentioned here so this one this one we will not try and we are not even going to make an attempt to identify what type of reaction is happening in the reactor for example like but we will we will define some some laws the in, in textbook they call it as a rate rate loss so we will fix our mind and assume that that chemical reaction is going to follow some rule and that rule is nothing but a first order kinetics or a second order kinetics and then we will design something based on those 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 um, those rules or laws if you want to call it as a law you can call it as a as a law because uh, because that is Whenever I state loss, or whenever you see the word loss in chemical engineering, it means uh, there are no people don't understand the physics what exa exactly happening in the in the system. So they call it as a law, and they just think that system follow that law. So that's the meaning. So whenever you see the word law in any engineering module, so that's the mindset behind that word. You know? And then reactor design. So this one we will learn by by solving some some he few heavy duty problems. Yeah, they for that you might need to use a lot of a pen and paper you must solve those problems i will do it in the tutorial time and then you have to practice in home yeah? so that's how you are going to pass this module and then what i want to say like uh, this one module is uh, will give you an opportunity especially for the students who do not have an engineering background but who want to learn something from chemical engineering so this is the perfect module for you so it will give you and uh, the opportunity to learn the basic principles involved in chemical engineering like uh, and also the different topics in chemical engineering as i said already reaction engineering mass transfer heat transfer a bit of process calculation a bit of equipment design and you will learn a bit more about the different unit operations which chemical engineers learn separately as a different module so so this is a perfect perfect module and and, and i know we have some chemical engineering students in this classroom so but i try to make this um, this module in a way that nothing will be repeated for them so everybody will be treated in the in the everybody will be treated fairly you know like everybody will learn something new and they have to put some effort to get the marks yeah so they won't get the marks from whatever they learned in the previous year so they will learn something new it's also my job to to tell them something new which they never learned before in other modules so i designed the the lecture notes in such a way so they will also get some new information and and the people who do not have engineering background this is a perfect module you will learn a lot of principles of chemical engineering through this module and i'm going to talk a bit about the more topics apart from mass balance energy balance heat transfer reaction engineering reaction kinetics equipment design there are a few other good things in this module so i will try to write it so so mostly mostly these bioprocess engineers or pharmaceutical chemists or engineers or scientists they they call these processes in generally as a downstream downstream operations so we will come back to this later what does this mean by by downstream downstream is, is shortly like you make some product and then this product may not be pure or this should be converted into dry format or it can be stored into some other solution format or it should be purified so whatever the unit the the things that we are going to perform some other operations like even a simple filtration or drying or uh, other 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 operations like uh, like uh, like a chromatographic separation or adsorption or crystallization distillation so those operations comes after this part 
so we call them as downstream operations so we are going to or you are going to to learn the principles involved in these downstream operations like uh, as if you do not have an engineering background you might have learned what is an extraction is you you take something from some product you know? it's like uh, you extract something from bulk material from to to some other phase yeah maybe or, or if it's a uh, like a normal filtration for example it contains a solid and liquid you filter them and then you take the solid out and then you remove the the so the, the liquid which we call it as a filter so you might have learned all those things but in this module what we are going to see is the engineering aspect of those 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 unit operations so so what are the top unit operations that we will cover so let me list it out here so So we will cover extraction in specific liquid liquid extraction so why this one this is so important in pharmaceutical industries yeah? so so many of the even this most of the antibiotics they, they purify using this technique so i will cover this anyway in more detail like uh, how this technique techniques work so how to design uh, an extraction unit and then we will go on to distillation and then we will learn a bit about uh, chromatographic separation and then we will learn about adsorption crystallization so so these are the different unit operations that we are going to to cover in this <coughs> in this module so so for liquid liquid extraction you, you you won't just learn what is an extraction technique or something goes in something comes comes out you won't stop there you will learn the 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 inner details like if you have two liquids when they come to one equilibrium or how do you express those those data like liquid liquid equilibrium data how do you how do you make use of those data and how to interpret those data and then how to exploit those data to design an extraction unit liquid liquid extraction unit and then the same rule apply for distillation so so distillation is something like if you have two solutions and one solution have a higher boiling point and another solution have a lower boiling point so when you raise the temperature obviously the, the solution with the lower boiling point it's going to evaporate first and then we can condense them and then collect it as a product so we will cover those topics in detail but but as such i can tell distillation theoretically you have a liquid mixture you are going to separate it just by heating it and followed by condensation to collect some vapors which evaporated first yeah? so that's so easy to tell but as chemical engineers you have to know the details like um, like like how the how the two components exist like in a vapor phase and how how they exist in the liquid phase you should know the concept of vapor pressure you should know the the concept of uh, something we call it as a bubble point we will call it as a dew point so you are you are going to not just the topic of distillation and like a, like from a theoretical standpoint you will know you will know the inner details yeah? so the actual physics involved in the distillation process when somebody knows i manufacture some alcohol using a distillation unit you will know even more more than them yeah like so it's not about theory you will know the the the, the entire process like why some something have to evaporate and how how we can collect that how to how how we can how do you call like how do you can separate them effectively and and so many things yeah apart from distillation you will you will have a nice opportunity to learn about um, vapor liquid equilibrium so this is a very good topic to to cover both the principles of uh, vapor liquid equilibrium and also distillation and and also extraction is a very nice topic to cover both the the, the unit operation which is extraction and also the liquid liquid equilibrium the fundamentals of liquid liquid equilibrium and you will also learn how to draw a ternary diagram that's you are not going to learn that in any other module yeah? so so this is a very good opportunity to to know the basics of a ternary diagram or how to plot a ternary diagram so those things will be something new for the people especially if you do not have an engineering background so this module is good in, in terms of the topics that we are going to cover and then finally we will go on to chromatographic separation so so, so this one is a bit of a theory so so I, I will come back to this detail so this one it involves some some solid and then some fluid that passes through the solid and that solid helps to separate the components that are in the liquid phase your liquid may contain 
more than one or two two chemicals which may be dissolved and then we will try to separate them separate them using some solids loaded in a column so those things we will learn in this one and then it's not just a theory part like uh, i know what is a chromatographic separation but you will learn the engineering part as well so so those things i will i will tell you the we will talk a bit about the residence time and you will also know how to if if you have like um how do you call it? like uh, like <clears throat> like a chromatographic peaks you will learn how to extract some nice information about concentration for example from those chromatographic peaks so i will i will teach you how to get those information yeah like especially if you were a pharmaceutical scientist or engineer you were going to use this uh, chromatographic separation almost every day to purify something or to separate some components so those things we are going to to learn and and then we will learn about uh, adsorption adsorption is a very very cool technique and it's one of my favorite topic and it's and i also do a lot of research on this area and crystallization is another is 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 one of my another favorite topic because i i also do a lot of research work on both of these areas so i'm going to teach these two topics in a slightly different way instead of following a textbook i'm going to bring my own scientific knowledge that i gained through in this last 10 to 12 years so, so so I will try to make a notes by myself and then I will tell you what's the principles of adsorption and what's the concept of a solid liquid equilibrium and then we are going to few, see some some theories like uh, these are very old theories developed in 1980, 1906 developed by big scientists like Langmuir and Friendlich probably might have no, no probably might have learned learned these expressions in maybe in physical chemistry so but still still we will give that engineering flavor so we will design a batch batch adsorption unit just using those uh, those tiny little constants that you get from those langmuir expressions or friendly expression and then crystallization crystallization is an extremely important unit operation like whenever if you're manufacturing any pharmaceutical product if you want a hundred percent okay obviously maybe like no, more than 99 percent purity crystallization is the unit operation that you need you know because the uh, crystallization will never happen unless you don't have a super saturation so and and if you have a super saturation that allows you to to concentrate something which is it will allow you to concentrate just to the pure compound so if you if you are targeting for some product of near 100 percent purity you need crystallization so that's why in many industries the final unit operation will be a crystallization unit even the sugar that you eat every day in the coffee or everything that's the it's 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 manufactured via crystallization technique the last unit operations where they produce the sugar is crystallization technique and that's why you see them as pure white if you look into any of the the labels if you check for purity even if you go to spa or any other supermarket you will see most of your sugar is 99.9 percentage pure and and that purity comes because you get that product using crystallization so crystallization is a very important technique and you must learn as part of this this module and then finally you will we will cover something not related to unit operations but something related to agitation and mixing so whatever you are going to do even crystallization or uh, or adsorption in a batch reactor or a chemical reaction in a batch reactor you we need the components to be in good contact in intimate contact with each other if you mix two liquid then two liquid should be in intimate contact if you mix a solid and liquid they should be in intimate contact so that something will move from one side to other side and so so this is not even a chemical engineering concept this is a common science yeah like once we once you add sugar why do you mix it because it it you speed up the reaction reaction like transfer of your your sugar molecules from your sugar cube to the solution which is your milk or whatever yeah <coughs> so so agitation and mixing plays a big role and uh, so we will try to cover this topic in uh, maybe in one lecture or two lectures so yeah? agitation and mixing is a very very big topic distillation is an extremely big topic you can have one separate module just on distillation you have one separate module just on chromatographic separations they are really massive m massive topics like uh, if you just go to google you put a handbook of distillation you will get at least four to five books so it's really a vast topic you put a handbook of chromatography you will get at least uh, 
10 different books. So we will try to do some justice. We will try to cover those topics fairly so that you will learn all the basic principles that you want that that you should know about these different topics so that's what we are going to cover in this lecture so so, so but then few things i want to mention i forgot about uh, agitation and mixing like uh, like okay this this agitation and mixing are we 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 need to focus on this topic because you should at some stage you should know like if you perform any reaction it can be a chemical reaction or a physical just mass transfer process you must need to speed up the reaction you know like uh, if you want to convert say like product a to some new products so if you you can do that in one day or if you if you mix it you can do the same product in half an hour so mixing and agitation plays a very big role on the process economics so that's why we are covering this topic in this particular module and and you will learn this yeah in if you go to any pharmaceutical industries the first thing you're going to do or manufacture any product you need a chemical reactor and there should be a mixing and it should be an effective mixing so you will you will learn some some basic things and as part of agitation and mixing it's not only about like a, what type of propeller we are going to use or or how we are going to provide the mixing to the solution you will also learn few chemical engineering concepts you will learn some something about uh, like a dimensionless number we call in chemical engineering like you will learn about Reynolds number you will learn about um, few other dimensionless quantities like a power number for example and so those topics i will cover i will try to cover so it's a, as i said it's a big topic so i will try to 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 make it short so that you will learn you will know the basic principles in agitation and mixing and once we are doing this agitation and mixing we will slightly cover the another topic we can call it a scale up so if you have one reactor say like one liter if you have another reactor so 10 liter so so how to do this how to scale up yeah? it's not that easy you know like if you if you you need to calculate how fast we should agitate in both of the reactor or how much impellers we should add inside if you have a big reactor so that you will end you will have a complete mixing so so in chemical reaction or any mass transfer process or any physical process like um like adsorption for example or crystallization for example so you need a, a perfect mixing so mixing plays a big role and for that you need to, to know about uh, the principles in agitation so i will try to cover this this topic and then what to do and and then finally one more topic which is missing is part it's called process analytical technology yeah? so so i will come to come back to this later so you are going to learn about part part of, through through a laboratory experiment it's not a you are not going to come to the lab i'm going to do the experiment for you i'm going to upload the videos you are going to see and in the video i'm going to show how how these pad tools will be used in the industries so and then i will give you some experimental data you are going to solve that experimental data for me and get some useful information out of that so you have to you work a bit work a bit to learn about this topic pad tool so so you you must put some some effort to understand what the part tool is about and then few things i want to mention is like maybe if you want you can take it like a like a request from me or maybe some advice so if you if if you look if you remember whatever i said so far we covered a lot of topic we have to cover a lot of topics so in my opinion this is a slightly a huge module and then which means the good thing is you can learn a lot of good stuff through this module because we are covering this different aspects in chemical engineering everything into one module and then it may not be possible to from my side to cover all the topics in detail in 12 weeks so so <clears throat> but the good news is like if you look at the the mod the module title it's batch process engineering it's batch process engineering yeah. So, so whatever we are going to learn, like a, like a reaction or a adsorption or crystallization or distillation or liquid liquid extraction, we are going to keep one thing in our mind. We are going to just assume we are going to operate all those unit operations in a batch mode. We are going to perform a reaction in a batch mode and then we are going to solve the engineering aspects of those things. So everything we are going to limit our attention to 
to batch batch mode so uh, so we think everything is operating under batch mode which is not a bad thing to to learn if you go to any pharmaceutical industries almost 90 percentage of the products are produced in batch mode there are many good reasons for that and i will tell you what are those 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 good reasons during the the lecture time so so if you want i can tell right now like like one one good reason is like you have only one reactor and if you want to produce different type of products you can use the same reactor if you perform say like you, you you manufacture some product in one hour stop the reactor clean it and if you want to manufacture the next product you can load with another type of reactants and produce the, the new products so you you effectively use the same reactors for for different type of uh, <coughs> different type of reaction to perform different type of reaction and also to get different type of products and sometimes especially if you're dealing with biological materials if you expose the, the reactor to some environment liquid environment for a long time it might encounter some contamination so it's better to stop the reaction clean the reactor and then load the reactor again freshly with your reactants and some other components and then do the reaction again so there are so few other re reasons if you, if you think in terms of uh, sterilization and and so on and other thing is like for example sugar the the one which we use every day most of the sugar sugar plants they operate for six months and that's because they have sugar cane or beetroot only for six months in in a year so so they work for six months and then they spend the remaining six months in cleaning the plants yeah? so at least in india it works like that i don't know how in europe western countries so so there are other few good reasons to 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 learn the principles involved in in these different unit operations and especially if they're operating in the batch mode yeah so um, obviously you can operate all those unit operations that we are going to cover in this module in continuous module but we are not going to cover this in this lecture yeah so so that's the thing you should you should know and then how these lectures will be delivered i'm going to deliver in offline mode probably I'm, I'm not sure about tutorials so what i'm going to do is like i will i will give the lectures and then i will upload them in the youtube that's what i did in the previous year chemical engineers know because the students who are in this classroom they 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 took my another module in the previous year cg4017 so i'm going to deliver this module in offline so i will record everything in in paper two, paper two is the technique which I'm technology which I'm using right moment, right at the <laughs> right now at this moment. So and then I will create videos using paper two. Paper two is really good in especially when you are going to derive something. I can easily write it here like dx by x or whenever we, we deal with a ternary diagram, for example, like here. So I can draw the diagrams very very easily. I can label them. I can show you how you move your liquid from here to here, here to here. So, so it's very easy, easy for me to to explain some complex topics using paper tube rather than in a PowerPoint. Yeah. So, I like derivations. I like mathematics. So that's why I prefer to use this type of uh, mode to while delivering the the lectures. Yeah. And and you will you will realize that this is going to be really helpful for you. So. Because I can tell, I can put some PowerPoint slide and then tell, okay, this is the ternary diagram. You have three lines and you have B, A, C. You put the mouse point and then you start from this point to that point. Say like a, like X to X dash or something like that. It will be very difficult. Yeah. So, so especially for tutorial, this is a really a good technique. So I will try to use paper tube and then I will try to, to, to explain the principles involved. So as I said, the next lecture, I'm not going to 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 write and talk yeah because the, and what I'm going to do is I will write I will write everything the way I'm talking to you now I'm going to write that write that in the notebook so it will be displayed in your screen and then I'm going to start recording only after that so for me it's like a double job but but that's okay I'm happy to do that so so this way it will save some time yeah like uh, if I write last year I got some really nice feedback from from few students from chemical engineering they said to me like it's it's like um every time when i write when i write it's like uh, like some videos i upload for one and a half hours but that can be done in 45 minutes and i and i agree with them so i'm going to take their advice seriously so i'm going to implement this uh, 
in this year so i will try to write everything and then i will try to explain other other than the tutorial videos tutorial videos i'm going to write line by line what i'm going to talk i will write it i will show that's how you have to draw the diagram it should look like this and you, your diagram should go something like that i will explain one by one bit slowly because especially if you don't have a engineering background you need those uh, this line by line teaching you know because it's this ternary diagram these things may be slightly tough you know like so you have to you have to look when i'm going to to write something or when i'm going to solve something yeah so 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 that's how we are going to do so the lectures will be delivered offline mode so i will create videos using paper tube and then as i said we will have some derivations problem solving and we will use a lot of graphical methods so i will give you some graph even in your final exam i will give you some some diagram with some graph sheets so you have to use them to solve some some problems yeah so so try to pay attention whatever i'm going to to do during the lecture hours <coughs> so and then again note that this is an engineering module so we are going to cover only the engineering aspects of the chemical reactions and the and the unit operations and regarding tutorials i'm not going to tell like okay today is going to be tutorial day it, it won't happen yeah because uh, this is an engineering module like uh, i can say it week one like monday tutorial day but what i'm going to deliver on that day if if you don't know the theory yeah so we will cover the theory some are heavy duty theories uh, so and then i will give you one week time say for example if i finish liquid liquid extraction this week so i will give you a second week so third week we will start the problems how to solve the liquid liquid extraction problem yeah so this is what i'm planning to do if you want me to to solve the problems immediately once i finish the topic i can do that yeah in fact for me that's more easy so that's how i'm going to do it and then once i finish the uploading the tutorial videos i will give you some time to to watch and then probably i will talk through your class rep and then we can we can make some live sessions and then we can solve the same problem same problem in front of you and if you have some problems you must tell to me and then try to try to learn using excel and then try to learn using a graph paper and then especially these ternary diagrams are very difficult to plot in a graph paper if you, if you, because your graph paper only have two dimensions x and y so i will teach you how to plot these ternary diagrams on a graph sheet so you will learn that something new as from this this module yeah so you will also learn like if you have xyz you you will know which one to focus and you will try to plot them on a normal graph sheet and then you will get some nice information and then you will design yeah, like, say for example distillation unit or a liquid liquid extraction unit or something or, or if you want to predict the vapor liquid equilibrium properties so, so these things you will learn during this from this module yeah I have some notes written what to tell to you and then I'm going to beg you 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 must watch the video immediately on the same day because last year students complained a lot of complaints in fact they said module is very tough that's the repeated complaint again in the module satisfaction survey they killed me in fact and and why the module looks tough in my opinion or it, it happens only if you if you accumulate the things if you don't learn immediately if i upload a video if you don't watch it immediately it's going to be very tough especially engineering modules you know like it's not only for this module there are few models in chemical engineering like like thermodynamics or uh, or, uh, or like advanced separation techniques or transport phenomena there are few modules you must learn immediately after the lectures so if you don't do that it will look it will look tough and it will be tough so uh, the the best advice is you to watch the video immediately on the same day and then try to make a uh, notes by yourself take a note try to to write it that's how i learned that's how many good people many good scientists i know that's how they learned if whenever i talk with a very good chemical engineer he always have a notebook and a pen he always write whatever we say or even if you go to a conference i always see them they are taking notes taking notes they use a lot of pen and paper that helps you to learn especially this engineering subjects you know so so that's my advice so try to watch the videos more than one or two times for example liquid liquid extraction that will be covered in the next topics 
it's very it's not tough topic but it's very difficult to understand you know so so you must i will try to put it in the simplest possible way that's the that's the only thing i can do but you have to do it you have to watch it again and again try to make use of your pen and paper and try to repeat whatever i'm going to write or whatever i'm going to say so that way you will learn these techniques so, it, so so that way you will not complain for sure at least i will be happy about that yeah. so 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 my advice is like engineering modules in general might look tough but once you know the theory and the fundamentals you will solve any engineering problem so you must read let me write it you must read learn practice and use pen paper graph sheets so these are the the pathways to get a grade huh? <laughs> Maybe one grade, maybe. I just want to mention, like, why are we studying this uh, this module, or why are we learning this module? Like, as I said, many pharma industries in Ireland or any other part of this world, they manufacture their products in batch mode. So there are many good reasons. I said already some of them. <clears throat> So, so that's the main reason for for doing this module. Yeah. So, another thing is like, uh, so you, apart from why are we learning this module? This is a good opportunity for you to learn the different aspects of aspects of chemical engineering. So, if you go to a pharma company, you are not going to just work with people who have some experience with the pharmaceutical science background because everything is produced at process scale. Nobody is manufacturing any product in gram scale, say 1 gram, 0.1 gram. It will never happen even in your dreams. So, everything is happening at a massive scale like 10,000 kgs, 20,000 kgs are 20,000 liters, 40,000 liters. So you must know the engineering side. Yeah? Without knowing engineering, you cannot produ produce anything even at kilogram scale. So that's the main reason you are learning this model. You will learn the fundamental principles. And other thing, I can tell you distillation is a very beautiful operation. It looks so good if you look in the picture. It can separate some components into two components like a liquid that contain two components into vapor and liquid and both of them may be pure i can tell so many beautiful words but at the end of the day if there is a problem in a distillation unit say like uh, suddenly your product is giving from the purity of your product say drop from 99 percentage purity to 80 percentage then you sh you will you should know why that happened and if you if you want to figure it out why that happened then you must know the chemical engineering principles you should know the the concepts of vapor liquid equilibrium and same rule apply for extraction if there is some problem and if you want to troubleshoot or even if somebody asks oh suddenly my reaction is happening like a like a something is not going fine then you should know the reason and you will know that reason only if you know the inner working principles about the liquid liquid equilibrium vapor liquid equilibrium solid liquid equilibrium or if my reaction is going very slow why is that suddenly then you will know something is problem there is some problem with the mixing and there is no enough mass transfer maybe something is getting killed into my inside my reactor why is that because there is no enough heat transferring into the reactor or during the reaction some something is some temperature is building up and it's killing something inside the reactions something some reactants inside the reactor or something is getting degraded due to a sudden temperature spike into the reactor so those things you will know only if you know the chemical engineering principle so that's why you are studying this module yeah? and then <clears throat> How I'm going to assess this module. So I'm going to, for the moment, I'm going to stop recording this video because uh, I'm recording everything in my tab. Sometime if I exceed some, say like uh, after 30 minutes, for some reason it will disappear out of nowhere, then I have to repeat the lecture. So I'm going to stop, I will save this video and then I will continue immediately to the next one. So where I will talk about how I'm going to assess this module and what are the lab reports are about. So I will stop now and then I will continue immediately. Thanks for listening.